Come for the bread, stay for the politics. I'm Ben Walsh, and this is Let Them Eat Bread. So today on Let Them Eat Bread, we have an interesting recipe uh, coming from Chef Stephen Walsh. And if you've been paying attention to this series, um, you know that he and I share a last name, and that is no coincidence. He is my little brother who is sharing his potato, red, his potato bread recipe with me to try. And although Stephen will not be with me on the show today um, to show me how to do it, uh, I have promised him that if I royally mess this up, uh, that he can come on the show and show me how to do it the right way. So that being said, let's get started. So first, we have four ounces of water here at room temperature. And we're going to combine that with our yeast. We have half an ounce of yeast here. This is active dry yeast. Now, so quick correction, on the recipe, it did say um, one and a quarter ounces of fresh yeast. However, uh, we're going to be using active dry yeast, so we are going to be using um, that amount instead, uh, the half an ounce instead. We're also going to put our sugar here. Let's just make sure this is sugar and not salt. Yes, it is. All right, we're going to put our sugar in here as well. We're going to give this a quick mix with our whisk, fork if you have it, and just again, you're not trying to get this all to come together, but you do just want to give it just a quick mix, okay? Then we're going to cover this and set this aside while we prepare the rest of our ingredients. So the next thing we need to do is combine our eggs and our milk. I have 10 ounces of almond milk here, but any milk will do just fine. Again, we've got two large eggs. We're just going to pour these in here to combine. Okay. Just give these a quick mix, make sure everything is mixed together. All righty. Yeah, so you see I've got a little bit of egg on the end here, so just I just need to whisk a little bit more, and then we will see that I am actually do not have, hopefully, as much or any egg hanging off my whisk. All right. We are probably done with the whisk, but I am gonna keep it here just in case. So this is our egg and milk mixture. Next thing we need to do is combine our two flours. Today we're working with uh, both all-purpose flour and bread flour. We have four ounces of bread flour and we have uh, one and a half pounds or uh, 24 ounces of bread uh, uh, all-purpose flour. We're just going to mix these together. We're all just going to mix in our salt. We have three quarters of an ounce of salt. I'm using kosher salt. You can see it's like a decent clip of salt, um, but don't worry, the potatoes are going to absorb a lot of that. So if it looks a little, if it seems a little salty to you, don't worry about that. Do just follow the recipe uh, and I believe we'll be fine. The other thing generally about salt is, and we're just going to mix these here, by the way. Um, the other thing generally about salt is that if you feel there's too much or too little, you can typically alter the salt. What it's really going to do is enhance the flavor of the bread. It doesn't really act to do much chemically um, with the bread recipe. But, um, you know, I would, I would at least do at least a tablespoon of salt if you're working with the bread or even a large bread recipe like this is. Um, at least a tablespoon, maybe two. Okay. All right, so now we are we have combined our flours. We have our potatoes here. We're going to mix in. Oops, that's not our potatoes. Sorry, that's the yeast mixture. We have our potatoes here. Okay, and so these are um, mashed potatoes I made last night. They're cooled to room temperature. I just mashed them with a fork. Just boiled the potatoes. You can bake them. You can boil them. It should not matter too much for this recipe. The only thing it might do is you might waterlog the potatoes a little bit. By, bake, by boiling them as opposed to baking them. If you do that and you haven't let them cool to room temperature and it seems like your potatoes might have a little bit of water in them, don't worry about it. Uh, like with all doughs, it's going to be easier for us to dry a wet dough than to re-wet a dry dough. So we're just going to put this in and together and we will mix it up. And if it turns out it's a little liquidy, this dough, then we'll just add a little bit more flour as we're getting in and we will correct that error. 
Okay, so now that I've talked enough about that, we are going to actually combine our potatoes in here. Oh, here we go. That was, that was a little bit more of a splash than I intended, but that's okay. All right. So we are going to... All right. So we have added our potatoes. Now we're going to add our milk mixture and our yeast mixture. And we're just going to combine this a little bit right before we add our flour. And now ordinarily, uh, once all this is combined, you would put this out onto a, um, a what's it called, a board like we normally do on the show. But because um, it is cold in the northern hemisphere where I am um, and because it is uh, the dough requires a warm temperature to knead, and I don't really want to sit here kneading for a while, and I'm sure you don't want to watch me knead for a while. Um, what we're going to do instead is I have brought my standing mixer out, and we're going to use that um, instead to kind of get this all combined. I'm just going to do a base combine in here, put in the butter. It's four ounces of butter here melted. Uh, it's one stick in the U.S., And we're just going to combine this roughly until dough forms. Um, so I'm using a whisk for this. It probably isn't the best tool. Uh, I'll probably have to switch from the whisk to something else, probably to my spatula here in a moment. But for now, right, this is kind of what we're working with. The potatoes need to be baked with the skins on for this recipe. So if you peeled your potatoes, not that big a deal, but the recipe does call for the skins on. All right, so I'm gonna just try and clear my whisk here of all of the um, of all the dough, and then we will put the whisk down and we'll just start kneading this. We'll combine it to the. We will put all of it in the standing mixer. If you're not using a standing mixer, that's fine. Just mix it with your hands or a wooden spoon, and we will be on our way. Also, just take a moment. I regret doing this this way a little bit, but that's okay. We live and we learn, right? We are doing this together for this very purpose. And also, um, another way that this recipe has been made for me, although I've never made it this way, is to, instead of mashing the potatoes, do the potatoes um, in chunks. And um, to kind of have chunks of potatoes. Uh, those are typically warmer um, when you put them in. So if you do decide to do that, just know that, you know, this whole process is going to be a little different because you're working with chunks of potato as opposed to mashed of potato. And it, it's just a little, it's just a little different. It'll feel different. Um, it'll act differently. Um, and it will be recommended that you put the potatoes in like at the very end, um, so that you don't dry out the dough with the potatoes. All right. This is probably as much as I'm going to get off. Uh, I can get a little bit more off. There we go. Sorry about this. Okay. That's, that's probably as good as it's going to be. All right. So what we're going to do now, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're going to put everything in our standing mixer bowl. It should feel very heavy. Come on. Don't fail me now. And that should just boop right in that goes. Yeah, so just make sure you get all your ingredients in here. And it is not looking like we're going to have a waterlogged dough, which is great. I'll just kind of make all that easier as we go forward. And if your dough seems a little bit dry, there's no harm in putting a little bit extra water in. As you saw on my episode last week with Lauren Ashcraft, um, sometimes a recipe just doesn't anticipate how your ingredients are going to react, uh, which is fine because, you know, lots of things contribute to how well a dough hydrates. Um, 
the amount of water in the air, for example, your elevation can do it. There are lots of factors um, that change the way that a dough behaves. So if your dough is a little dry or a little wet, um, you know, there are little things that you can do before it comes together. And I emphasize before it comes together um, to help fix it. Once it's in a dough ball and it's kind of been worked a little, it's going to be a lot harder to kind of make any corrections that you need to make. But um, if you monitor it, you can correct almost any error that you have, as long as with, you know, with wet ingredients and dry ingredients. And again, water and flour. I wouldn't go adding oils and things to breads because that will alter the chemistry of it a little bit. All right, so I'm going to chuck this. Oh, there's one little piece of dough left. Come on. In you go. There you go. So I chuck this in the sink. Actually, we probably put everything in the sink at this point. Uh, let's, let's get that drop of extra liquid. Okay. And then just this. All right. All right. So we're going to move over to the standing mixer. I have affixed a dough hook to it, and we're just going to turn it on the lowest setting for a little bit. Let's just bring some of this excess flour in. We will need to eventually turn it onto our board, but for now, also take a moment to clean up if you need to. Um, you're going to listen for your standing mixer to make a straining sound. So you can hear that it's straining a little bit. So once you do that, just turn the speed up a little um, to the next one. You don't want to turn the speed up too much at any given time uh, because that may over -need your dough. Remember, like I always say, if you're using a standing mixer, just be aware that you can over -need your dough. You can overwork your dough. So just be careful. What we're looking for with this particular dough is to knead it, not until necessarily it passes the window pane test, but it's until it's between 88 and 90 degrees. So I'm actually going to be using um, my trusty thermometer to do this. But if not, if you don't have a thermometer, um, the best thing to do is just to um, put your hand in the dough. And if it, it feels just lukewarm, that's probably close to where you want it to be. You can make it a little warmer than that, but you don't need to worry too much once it's at that stage. Also, if your dough just kind of looks like it's not being worked a particular amount, you can turn up the speed. But honestly, unless the, the machine is actually straining all by itself, there's really no need to do that. If the dough seems too wet, obviously add some add a little bit of flour. But again, we're adding little bits of ingredients at a time. If it's too dry, take it, turn your stand mixer off, add a tiny bit of liquid, and then turn your stand mixer on, on the lowest setting, right? If you need to bring a, a dough back essentially from the dead, that's the way you can do it. But you know, we're in the stage where we're forming it into a dough ball, so it's much more difficult to, um, you know, save it at this point if it's too dry. So, the dough's starting to look like dough. It's good. Uh, it probably needs more time, but, uh, and it probably needs a little bit more flour. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny bit of all-purpose flour, literally just a couple fingers full, and we're going to add it because think about it this way, right? For a standing mixer, um, you're not needing it on a board. So you're not going to have the benefit of adding flour to a board and knowing when it sticks. So we're just going to add a tiny little bit of flour to our machine. And really, this is not much. You def I would say if you're measuring it, an eighth of a cup is probably good. And we're going to turn it right back on onto that low setting and let it deal um, with the flour intake. And then once it started to incorporate that, you can bring it back up to speed. Again, be careful about overworking your dough. You know, you, it is possible to, to do that and then it won't rise evenly, it won't rise well. Um, so remember, we're looking for a ball of dough to form, um, tacky, not sticky, right? You wanna be able to put your hand on it and then take your hand off even after sitting on the dough for a while and just know that <clears throat> when you do that, pieces of the dough are not gonna actually stick to your hand, right? So that's really the goal here. So I'm going to show you again. So we've got some more 
development here, but the flower didn't really seem to do much, and the dough still looks pretty pretty wet. Um, you can see that it's kind of falling off the uh, you can see that it's falling off the hook here. So what we want to do is we want to add a little bit more flour for this to come together in a cohesive manner. In fact, you can actually see as I'm talking here that it's it's coming off the hook um, that it's dragging down. So we're going to add probably about that same amount, and remember you're doing this as if you were flouring a board, right? So think about how much flour you'd put on a board to knead around, and that's how much flour you wanna to add to your machine. All right, so we're gonna try this again. And by the way, I would be doing the same thing if I was kneading on a board, right? The only difference is the board is cold, the house is cold, so we're just trying to keep every, all the heat and warmth in a, um, in a smaller environment here to make sure that you know, we keep our bread at the right temperature. Um, the other thing you can do if you want the bread to increase in temperature, obviously, if you're using a board that isn't stone, it might not, uh, you know, it might not be as cool. If you are using a stone board, you can heat it um, by just kind of wiping it down with hot water. Um, you know, you can warm your house a little bit. You can turn your oven on to kind of get some heat moving in your kitchen, right? There are ways you can also you can just knead faster. That's another thing, right? The more you work it, the hotter the dough is going to get partially because it's taking the heat from your hands, but partially because the working of the dough and the moving it around the friction actually creates warmth in the bread, and that'll bring it to the temperature we want it to be at, so. All right, so our bread is gonna need even more flour, and that's okay, so just stop your machine or stop your kneading, put some more flour on and get going. I'm actually gonna add close to a quarter cup of flour now because clearly this is a very wet dough. And although it's getting more difficult to lift this, you can see that the dough is, start, is starting to fall down. Um, it's a little difficult to see from there, but if you stare at it a while, you'll see the dough is actually moving down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about a quarter cup of flour here. I'm just gonna add it directly in, try and spread it out if you can, but there's really no pressure to do that because we want this to become a nice ball of dough. And we're just gonna close it and do it again. If you're doing this by hand, obviously you are way ahead of me on this game, right? You just, you're adding it as you're going, you're feeling it out. And we've done enough bread together at this point that you should know, you should have a feel for kind of when it's good. Um, so it's different obviously when you're using machine because you have to check it each time, but when you're doing it with your hands, you can feel it. You can, um, you can feel that it's getting less tacky, you can, uh, less sticky. You can feel that it's coming together. Uh, that type of thing you just can't get if you're working um, with a machine. And apparently in that time, um, the, dough, the flour exploded everywhere, so that's fine. I will clean that up later. So by the way, if your flour goes all over the place, like it just did for me, it probably means you put too much in. So that's another thing to be aware of or that your mixer is spinning too quickly, okay? So I'm gonna lift this up because we've got, look, this is, this is pretty much a cohesive mass at this point. So I'm gonna put some flour on my hands and I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna take this off and then we'll just put it on here to just kind of get it into a ball because this is coming together. All right, just take that down. And by the way, flowering of your hands, all that really does is just help so that things don't stick as much. Um, but I would actually say that this is not done uh, it's still sticky. So as I touch it, you can see that my hands still have dough on them. Um, so you don't want that. So we're going to add some flour, but we're going to be strategic about where we place our flour this time. We're going to place it underneath the bread so that the machine does not spread the flour all over the floor. And that should help us um, with bringing this together. Okay. So I'm going to rinse my hands real quick just because they're covered in dough, but um, if you are using machine and you did not get your hands covered in dough, then just add a little bit of flour to the bottom, 
push that bread on to push the dough on top of it that will make sure that there's a barrier so that you don't have um you know so you don't have uh, as much flour spillage as i just had But it's okay if your flour went everywhere. Bread is a messy process, it just is. So we deal. So I have a space behind my bread that I'm gonna pour some more flour into. And then I'm gonna take some flour on my hands and I'm gonna push the bread down on top of that flour so that the machine does not spread the flour everywhere. seem to be working as well as I thought it would. That's all right. So the other thing you can do is just move the flour in the bowl with your hands a little bit if the machine's really not doing a good job of it, which is fine too. But actually, I think this is about to come together. So we're going to run this real quickly, and then I think we will actually be ready to divide this up and let it rise. I think that is probably where we are heading, and that's a good thing. And it has taken less time than it usually does. So that is a benefit as well. So we're just going to work that in here a little bit using floured hands so it doesn't, so the dough doesn't stick as much. Um, and you'll feel it. It's starting to come together. It's starting to come together, I mean. And that's honestly the best thing for it. All right. So I'm just turning my machine up for one last minute here just to make sure everything has come together. All the flour that I put in just now has been absorbed and it is kneading it pretty intensely, which is great. It's exactly what we want. And so you don't want to just keep watching it and make sure that it looks right. And then as soon as it looks proper, just stop it, take it out, and you'll see that it's ready for us to bring back to our board. And sometimes it just gets stuck on your machine, so no big deal. Oh, and sometimes your machine gets stuck. There we go. So you can see we've got a nice cohesive dough formed in here. It's still a little sticky, so I'm, I'm going to move it just around a little bit. Um, but it, it's much less sticky, right? So I'm going to put my hand on it and just show you. So I'm putting my hand on, and it sticks a little, right? You can see dough is sticking a little, but not nearly as much. So we're going to take a little bit of flour and just put it on here to kind of seal the deal and finish this off. And then we're just going to take our hands, our nice floured hands, and just work it out of the bowl. And there you go. There's our dough ball. And, you know, just use your hands or a spatula. Just get the rest of this out. This is dough. You've worked hard for this. You should keep it as much as you can. It'll also, you know, obviously it's bread, so pre-bread, I guess. <clears throat> and there you go. So now we have our, we have our, um, our mass of dough. I'm just going to give it a quick few needs to incorporate this flour and to kind of get it into a ball form, but this is perfect. So so we're going to stick our thermometer in it and see how 
All right, so we're in the high 70s. Um, so it does need a little bit more time. Now, partially it might be because it's on um, a cold board, but just in case, I am just going to give it a little bit more time so at least gets to 80 because that's really the minimum it should be as we're doing this. And if this needs lots more flour, then that's fine. Just give that to it. But you can see if I put my hand on it, nothing. It's, it's tacky. So when I put my hand on it, you know, it doesn't just bounce off, but um, at the same time, it's not sticking to my fingers anymore. The dough come, come, came right off my fingers into this dough, which is great. And just keep working it until it feels right. And put your hand in and make sure it's that lukewarm you want. All right, let's try it. All right, and we are at 80 degrees. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this into a ball. Just the same way we always do, take our hands, cup them around the outside, make it into a ball here till it gets nice and taut and tight on top. You'll start to see if you look down um, that it's tightening up. Perfect, and just put a finger on it and it bounces back. We are ready to start rising. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our rising bowl and um, I am going to put a little bit of oil in it. I like the idea of using olive oil. You remember you want just barely a teaspoon in here. It's really not much at all just enough to coat the bowl and bread. So take your fingers and rub that around the bowl. And then as soon as it is ready, you're going to put your dough ball in, toss it around with the oil. And then we are going to get ready to talk some politics, some privacy and some climate change. We are big heavy hitters today with COP26 coming up and a bunch of new uh, and old privacy issues <clears throat> that I think are important. None of this is particularly socialist, um, but, you know, socialism also deals primarily with uh, more democracy, right? Bringing the power back into the hands of the people as opposed to um, the power of the very few. So when we talk about how companies abuse people and how individuals are kind of dealing with what companies can do them, what power and, and rights that you have over corporations, this is an important thing for socialists to think about too. And that's why I think these issues are important for us to talk about uh, on this show. So cover this in plastic wrap, put a tea towel on top of it. We'll set our timer for an hour uh, and then we'll talk some politics. I'll be right back. Again, if you have something more sustainable than plastic wrap, always use it. I want as much as possible to uh, talk about sustainability on the show, especially since we're talking about climate change today and plastic is a big part of that. Um, so if you have reusable plastic wrap um, or something similar, obviously you should use that. As I typically say, don't use a lid. The lid will pop off, especially since we got such a large dough today. You will likely pop your lid right off. And then an extra tea towel just to keep things nice and toasty. All right, our timer is set. So if you are not staying for the politics portion, take care. I'll see you in an hour. If you are staying for the politics portion, we're about to get started. One quick note, though, before you non-politickers leave, this is going to have to sit for an additional 10 minutes on our table. So when the timer actually goes off, the hour timer, we're going to put it on the board, divide real quick. There's going to take a quick break from 
uh, politicking. We're going to divide, put these um, to rest on the table for 10 minutes each. And then once we do that, we will continue talking politics just to cover that 10 minutes. And then we'll go on with the instructions. I'll give you some baking instructions. We'll move on from there. All right. So with that being said, set your timers. I will see you in about an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, about an hour and then again in 10 minutes. Ta-da, it has risen beautifully. We are going to, oh, there we go. We are going to divide this in half. We're going to do that by weight. Um, but first, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a quick knead to make sure that all the oil gets incorporated. So we're just going to just give it a quick knead so it comes back together. There we go. This dough feels great. I am so excited to eat this eventually. All right, so we're gonna see how much it weighs and then we're gonna divide it. Come on, fit on the scale. You know you want to. Oop. Um, so there's about five pounds. All right, so we're gonna try and divide this Roughly in two. I'm just using my bench scraper. You can use a knife. All right. So let's see how much this weighs. Let's just give it a quick shaping. 2.6. Okay. Let's see how much this weighs. Probably going to weigh a little less. It kind of feels like it's going to weigh a little less. 2.39. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is going to take a little bit off of here. So I just need it to weigh um, one ounce. That's going to do it. Okay. So I just need this in, give it a quick turn. And so what we're going to do is we're going to transform these into um, to balls, but then we are going to pinch them together. Uh, sorry, we're going to, yeah, we're just going to put these together on the table. So these are going to sit for another 10 minutes. Um, 
and there, we're gonna allow them to rise just another 10 minutes before we press them down and shape them. Just a quick little rise here. And we're just gonna cover them up, put them on the table together here. And we will go back to politics for 10 minutes, okay? So set your timers for 10 minutes and we will be right back to bread. That's our second timer. That was our 10 minutes. So we're going to look at these guys and lo and behold, they have grown. So we're gonna take our plastic off. And now we're going to put these, now it says to put them on sheet trays. So you, if you are making these without tins, then that's what you should do. I'm making these in tins. Um, and this is just your standard nine by five um, by three tin. So I'm gonna take each of these very carefully and just plop them in a tin, just move them around a little bit. And remember at this stage, you don't really wanna do a ton of touching of them because essentially what's gonna happen is, so first of all, these are gonna fill out these containers, but also what's gonna happen is if you fiddle with them a bunch, they are going to deflate. And if they deflate, then you won't get those beautiful air pockets that we love to have in bread. So, I am going to set these to start rising. Um, you want to set these for at least an hour. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so you want to let these rest till double in size uh, or at least one hour. So I'm going to set a timer for an hour right now, and then I will give you some instructions about what we're going to do with these once they have risen for another hour, okay? So... Uh, by the way, you want to keep you want to keep letting these rise until they are double in size. Don't rush the process. Don't it, it doesn't have to be exactly an hour, right? Bread takes time. It will take as much time as it needs. We were careful to make sure that the bread was at the right temperature before we started rising it, so it will continue to rise. Don't worry about that. It'll fill out our tins. It'll make nice, big, beautiful loaves, um, and I'm looking forward to having those. Okay, so once you have, once they have risen to the level that you are comfortable with them rising with, and by the way, just check them every half hour, right? They do seem to grow pretty quickly. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to do one thing. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot one part of the instruction. I forgot one part of the instruction. Um, you do need to push them down a little. That's what they said to do. Sorry. It says to push it down a little. I forgot about that. We're gonna do this again. Okay, take two, timer's on. I'm gonna reset the timer to an hour. I'm gonna move these over here so they can rise again. Okay, oops. All right, so now a timer, now an hour timer is set. Um, so what happens after that? We are gonna set our oven to 400 degrees, okay? And we are gonna put these loaves in the oven and let them, Bake for 35 to 45 minutes or until golden brown. If you have a thermometer, remember you want your bread to be about 205 degrees. Anywhere between 200 and 210 is just fine. And if you don't have a thermometer, just make sure that when you give it a nice little knock, it sounds hollow on the inside. All right? We want to make sure we don't have any raw dough. And this should be an absolutely incredible bread. One quick note, though, that Stephen has asked me to give. This bread only should is is doesn't freeze particularly well, so you just want to make sure that you have enough time to eat it. Um, you know, put it in a Ziploc bag if you don't think you're going to eat it right away. That's probably going to help keep it shelf life for as long as possible. But anyway, this should be a delicious and wonderful bread that you can use uh, for toast and sandwiches, and should be really nice. Also, apparently you can use this recipe for rolls. I did not demonstrate how to do that, but essentially what you would do is you would take, so instead of dividing into two loaves, 
What you would do is you would divide it into as many rolls as you want, just weighing them to make sure that it's even. You obviously divide by two, then divide that by two, and then that by two, and just go until you have rolls that you want to have in size. Give you beautiful potato rolls, and you can either cook these flat on a sheet tray, um, or you can cook them in you know any other container that you think makes sense for rolls. But essentially, that is it for this week's show. We will be back next week. Um, I cannot wait to make more bread with you. And I look forward to seeing the picture of your loaf, of your potato loaves that you make this week. All right, everybody, take care. Have a great week.